Hello everyone, welcome to the Runin open number one. I have my wrong, the wrong text up here, but you get the idea. <laughs> it's Runin open number one. Um, I was sick for this one, but I did participate in it, so uh, I just wanted to go over it again and give some commentary over top. <coughs> And this is a lineup that I brought to a past open. Um, I piloted it horribly wrong in that past open, so I wanted to give it another go, um, just with the exact same lineup here. A lot of my choices are just kind of... Um, I just pulled some random lists off the hub, really. And um, the goal here is to use a different lineup to win in a tournament. Um... Uh, hopefully every different open we participate in this year, that's gonna be maybe a goal, but I don't know if it's possible yet. We're gonna try. We're gonna see how it ends up at the end of the year. Uh, the first list over here is Red, Yellow, Burn. Not a great list in the meta right now, but um, I was inspired by Mardis's four times Crassius lineup that I went against uh, in a previous open. And so I wanted to hard counter that with a burn list. Um... <clears throat> Burn has fallen quite out of favor, it's just got a lot of counters to it. It's good into Swarm, it's good into Slow Decks, and that's about it. About into everything else. Um, red, Yellow, Angry, very strong list. And then I brought two slow lists. Um, <clears throat> makes the lineup a little bit clunky, but uh, I just wanted to play with these two lists because I thought they were cool. This is the Blue Sevens list, a very greedy Blue seven. so we go to both sides of our wells and just greed um, with a bunch of different value, like uh, all of these discounts with Spring Mochi and things, and Windfalls, and then we also have Aurora's Creation to double down on the big creatures we're playing, like Beiru and stuff, Magnus even. And then the Twin Soul list is basically Yellow Flyers, but with a splash of a blue package for some extra Swarm stuff in Flight of the Mantas, and then Twin Soul Spirit. <clears throat> So, let's get into the matches. Over here. And our first opponent is Mr. Fickle. <clears throat> so right off the bat, I'm looking to ban the yellow. <clears throat> yellow is looking like the only real list. I'm imagining Fickle does a lot of yak stuff. There is probably a green-yellow sack over on the left, but green-yellow sack should be pretty manageable. <clears throat> now, it is worth noting that with my really slow uh, Sevens and Twin Soul, I have to be very careful about how I use my uh, either Burn or Angry list, because probably one of those gets banned. Um, and it's really nice to have a fast, mid-range paced list. So that feels a little important to have. <clears throat> um, Fickle going to ban... The Red, Yellow, Angry. Very fair pick. Red, Yellow, Angry, one of the strongest, um, lists in the game right now. <clears throat> one reason I did bring the Yellow, Angry... Uh, the red, yellow, angry is because burn is kind of bad. So I wanted something else I could rely on that was decent. <clears throat> and here I've got to pick a starting list. It's got to be one of the slow lists to scout with. Like I said, I kind of want to save that red, yellow, burn now for something I can use as a fast list. Really, it'll be really good into the green, yellow sack. Um, and I don't know what the other two lists are yet. <clears throat> so we are just going to start with sevens, and Fickle starts with the sack. We get the turn two Magnus if we want it. <laughs> Play the Explorer plus one. Plus one Magnus. Amazing. <clears throat> We're 
just gonna continue off to the side. We have the option of Magnus if we want it. Really depends on what Fickle plays here, which is probably a really small swarmy creature. <coughs> <coughs> but he does not. He goes to the opposite side. <coughs> So I build the neutrals, trying to play the Magnus. Hmm. Giving up the well collections like this, I could have played the Archon and double collected. I don't know how I feel about the double neutral investment. Really bad now into the Demon Wing. Um, though, you don't have to see Demon Wing in a list like this, so that was kind of a strange one to see. <clears throat> Typically, you'll see Demon Wrangler, and since no deserts had been built here, um, I wasn't really expecting a Demon Wing. <clears throat> but we'll throw down the Magnus anyways, threaten that 3-3. <coughs> Finds a double soul drain. <clears throat> so I lose collections on t over two turns, and all I get is an Aurora. Sad. <clears throat> Hello, Cheese. Finally catching a stream of your favorite fairy, a frigateer. I am the only fairy, a frigateer, Cheese. <laughs> Let's be honest. <clears throat> Me and Fickle are keeping this game alive. And sometimes JT when he streams. <clears throat> God, I've had this cold for... I'm going on week four here. This has been a crazy cold. <clears throat> I'm pretty much recovered. I just have a bit of a dry cough still, which is super annoying. That's the worst thing that can possibly persist. <clears throat> so... I lost a lot of collections in the early game, probably for no reason. I'm gonna try to collect again. <clears throat> Beiru is really cool here though. Uh, right, so we wanted to get up to 8 anyways for Beiru. Land destruction's pretty cool. Lake to the left side for future farm boy, or a spring mochi. <clears throat> so if Fickle can't answer this here, uh, this is almost game over. Uh, falling two lines behind really hurts. He also invested the double neutral, which was interesting. Um, uh, why did he invest the double neutral? He didn't need that neutral, did he? Oh, he's running the yaks. <laughs> Okay, of course. <laughs> Leave it to Fickle. <clears throat> so yeah, the Beiru was not answered. Now he's just gonna stomp all these lands. <clears throat> the only answer really there was... Uh, a Nightmare. I think that's all he really had. I dump an Ancient Herald. Yeah, I mean... I don't think it matters too much what I do here anymore. <clears throat> There's actually no way he kills this Beiru now. All of his deserts are gone. <clears throat> so he just surrenders. Very fair. Beiru doing Beiru things. Right, so this is a best of three. So, um, this is a round of 16. So we only have one more match to win here. <clears throat> and he's starting with the red blue. Always an interesting color combination to see. Hey, Sash. We do enjoy these recaps. Nice. <clears throat> Yeah, I used to I used to do these um, 
tournament analysis series a long time ago. After I would do my tournaments, I would go over them like this and review them. And those were kind of fun, but they were also very long. <laughs> it's very long to do, like, the same tournament over twice in a row. <clears throat> but it is fun when I haven't done any commentary. <clears throat> Might be an idea also to just, like, watch and just skip through. But you gotta kind of, like, skip through to the important moments, which can be hard to find without really watching. We have the farm boy starts. <clears throat> Very exciting. And I'm comfortable starting double neutral here because we do have the Ancient Herald in hand. So this allows me to set up a double collection on the next turn. Because uh, I go exactly to six here. <clears throat> so double neutral investment, pretty important there. Fickle with his double neutral starts, you know it's going to be X. <laughs> And oh boy, is that a yak. That's a big yak. Not trying to call you out in bad faith, but didn't you say you were surprised by the demon wing last game? What? Was it the deck cover? That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even pay attention to that. True. <clears throat> pay attention, kids. This is what we can learn today. You can analyze a lot from a dead cover. And this guy gets his first buff. Takes a step back. <clears throat> uh, pretty fair play, to be honest. Getting the one buff rolling, you still get that double collection off. I mean, you lose it with the card, but... Um, now he's at stats to potentially contest that. Oh, right. <clears throat> right, he invests the safeguard here, which makes this transform very juicy. I was kind of debating whether I wanted to transform it here or not. I mean, I probably was going to anyways, but now I just get to gobble three free Faria. Very cool. Not wrong, that Demon Wing isn't usually run in sack, yeah. That cheers for the giggles. <laughs> yeah, if you want to throw me off my game, if you want to beat me in a tournament, just put your, like, best card as the deck cover. I won't even take notice. <laughs> oh boy, a walking fortress. Very exciting card to see. So easy value trades into just big boy Beiru. Uh, we actually, uh, yeah, Beiru will be our second seven since we played that Phantasm. So that Archon is going to be a six six. Um, next turn, I suppose. <clears throat> oh, I'm just investing the Archon here. Uh, right. I mean, this play is a little bit risky because my answer to the 710 is the 2 5 attacks over here, and that one guy's got a 5 1 stat line. Very vulnerable to something like, I mean, Flame Burst I'll accept. Flame Burst isn't the end of the world. But. <clears throat> Also isn't the end of the world to reinforce that left side, potentially. Uh, and now it just has to be the Beiru. I guess maybe I was hoping to trade this guy off before I dropped Beiru, because 7 power is a lot, but it doesn't really matter too much. We have a lot of value going um, with this farm boy, and then soon we've got Aurora's creation. We did just see the Flame Burst. So, we did at least draw that out of hand, I suppose. So he doesn't have a clean answer to Beiru, potentially, now. <clears throat> Love me some smooth sailing sevens. Watch Fickle's stream, he said something along the lines that it's a sad... That sad phantasm works despite of shield. 
Right, but that's an old discussion already. <clears throat> yeah. Um, shield's like technically a buff, right? And then so you're transforming the unit into a base card. It is sad. I mean, what's really sad here is the card protection. <laughs> Just a bad card. I think it could do with a change of like two cost, but then make it uh, give it a wild line count of something. <clears throat> it would certainly be good into flyers. Like, I imagine protection honestly might be cool in mono green, maybe? I don't know. Like, even at two cost, that might even not be that great at cards. Because you're really just investing an entire card and two Faria, potentially into basically a life buff, and that's it. It's like a, a worse version of Shamanic Dance, always. Because you don't even get the taunt out of it. <clears throat> you think it would be broken at two cost? Yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't really thought about it that much. It would surely be... I mean, it would be just a worse Shamanic Dance, wouldn't it? <clears throat> it would be a little bit better into things like Flyers. Um, you get to save that extra 1 HP. But, like, most creatures are, like, 5 power or less, I would say. I don't know, maybe, it, maybe it'd be on par with Shamanic Dance. Okay, and Fickle throwing in the Surrender here. <clears throat> so, quick match, but um, I think a lot of that came down to luck, I'm not gonna lie. We got the Beiru proc in the first game, and then in this game we got the Phantasm with insane value, so that was pretty crazy. There are a ton of matchups where you go above 4 damage on the creatures. Yeah, I suppose that's fair enough. There's a lot of, like, win condition things. But, like, what if it was 2 cost with a wild land count? Like, maybe a... an expensive wild, like, 4 wild? Surely it wouldn't be that broken. Okay. <clears throat> this matchup, uh, this series is the round of 8. I'm looking to ban the tree list, potentially. Um, just because I think this kind of hard counters me. Well, I've got these two slow lists, the sevens and the twin soul. I'm not sure if it's enough value to fight the tree though. Um, it, it definitely can be, but if the game goes really slow and then he finds the tree and places it in a spot where I can't reach it, uh, it's pretty much game over. <clears throat> And that list is probably going to hard counter my two red yellows. Um, Burn might have a chance. I'm not sure. Depends how much healing there is, I guess. But I do end up banning it. The only other ban consideration really was the red list over there. The mono red angry. <clears throat> but I think I can manage it. A lot of the time, bans come down to the decks that can win with the highest RNG, too. Like, I don't want to be facing decks that can just win because they get a good top deck. I'd much rather try to use strategies that I've learned over the years. <clears throat> We're getting rushed here. Oh, this was... Th right, this was the red list. So we're getting rushed with... Hate Seed cover. I remembered the cover this time. <laughs> <clears throat> but we have a pretty excellent start with Double Emissary. Clunky Twin Soul in hand. Really don't want to see that in a rush matchup, but it is what it is. And great opener from Zutaka. 
double creatures with that fire alley actually makes it pretty awkward, especially with that Astanu top deck. Uh, this is really not even the matchup that I want. A rush list versus something really slow. <clears throat> but... Yeah. I think the play is to just double collect here, accept the face damage, block the axe grinder spot, and hope for good top decks next turn. Um, this also allows me to hope to top deck like Soul Drain if he wants to go for face hits here. And then that, that will keep my emissaries intact. <clears throat> Seven has a reasonable speed, it just doesn't excel at going mid range. Fair enough, they've got the chargers. Twin Soul Astanu deck is getting popular lately on ladder 2. Oh, is it? Yeah, archetypes always go through these phases. One player decides, oh, I haven't played this in a long time, I'm gonna play it. And then everyone sees that, uh, sees that and then they get inspired to play the same list. So we get these, f like, uh, fluctuations of different archetypes hitting ladder. <clears throat> Super awkward position here, though. Um, I really would like to top deck a soul drain, but oh my god, my hand's so clunky. So do I go for the draw here? Uh... I do not. I end up going for the land build. I don't really know what the best play here is. It's... kind of tough. Like, most of my hand requires... Five, six lands. <clears throat> but we've got him down on three Faria, so hopefully he can't play too many aggressive things. It's pretty likely, though, as an angry list. He can just plus one into, like, the 5 4 trooper if he wants to. He can play the axe grinder. Um. And I mean, this is looking like game over already. We top deck message. That's what I would have top decked if I went for the draw. And I would have top decked the drain after all, so. Could have went for the draw, gotten the drain. I don't know if it really would have helped that much though. Like, Zutica is just going to be able to drop creature after creature. And we can't really do much about it. But since I did build that land, I'm going to have to invest fully into the lands. <laughs> Here it is correct to go for the land, you think? Oh, I debate the nightmare? Oh my. Right. Hmm. I mean, I guess I kinda had to. Like, if he hits me in the face here, I'm at uh, 7 HP, he drops another creature, and I have to nightmare whatever he drops anyways. So, Nightmaring now saves myself 4 damage. I think that was necessary, to be honest. <laughs> Nightmare was also correct, yeah, I think so. Oh, we're actually not in that bad a spot anymore, I just realized. <laughs> Funny that Twin Soul actually has a lot of value inside of it. Insane. So it just depends on where I want to put this lake. Probably on left, right. So there's a debate between left side for mantas, uh, good manta spots, but there's also a debate for right side. If I want to put Twin Soul in the future there or another flyer. Um, I think realistically I'm going to be using all of my big attack bodies to defend face though. So <clears throat> I think I agree with the left side. Mantas are the better, the better collectors. And we want to make sure that we can target this 4-4 wherever we go. Oh. Yeah, so I use one as a body blocker. Um, little bit weak to Flame Burst, I will say. I could have maybe played it safe, well, I don't know. Do I have to play safe? Do I have to play risky? Because I could have played it safe and put the other Twin Soul on the mountain instead, but... 
We go for the risky play, try to come back in this game a little bit. Um, now I definitely draw... We can draw for Spirit Theft, or even Soul Drain's fine. <clears throat> You've been very efficient with your collections and the opponent didn't put much focus on Econ. Yeah, he did just go for all the face hits immediately. Now we are in double flame burst range, very spooky. So we're gonna need to top deck some healing soon. <laughs> and that 4-3 can just sit there, he's targeting all the mountains. Um, I think he might even have found double flame burst here, I can't remember. Yeah, just the double flame burst comes down. So, pretty sad, but honestly a close match. I would say. <clears throat> if the double flame burst wasn't there, and we drew into some healing, um, we had a good chance of winning that match. So we're gonna counter with the sevens. <clears throat> um, the sevens list can operate on some pretty low land counts. We had a failed experiment. There was very for exactly two mantas and a stanu. Yeah, failed is very cool with a stanu because you get to essentially give him haste. And then Zutica starts sidelands, which completely confuses me because I thought he was playing a rush deck. <clears throat> But I guess he saw, like, the Twin Soul list, and he was like, oh, this is a six-line deck, I can beat him in the early game. Now we're playing a mid-range. So we can double collect for a little bit. So we got the battle toads, and we're not really under any pressure yet. <clears throat> Decides to go between wells, which I'm super happy about. That gives me time. And Zutica probably doesn't know what list I'm playing either at this point. Uh, I think the longer... I mean, in the late game, I win, right? Uh, his win condition is the Firebringers. We got some... We had a lot of Transform in this list, though. Frogifies, Phantasm. <clears throat> and a lot of value. <laughs> Battle Rager comes down and like, oh, hello. <laughs> I haven't seen that card in a long time. So, I think what I do here is I I try and line up a farm boy battle toad trade into it. It's a little optimistic, but uh, I don't particularly want to throw the 5 6 into it. <clears throat> Uh, worst case, Cypher's Wrath comes down, and then I just end up having to trade it with the 5-6, and then I have taken one more damage than I should have, which is not a, not a big deal. Builds the land for my Toad to step on. I guess you getting Wrathed. So yeah, we'll take one more damage. That's okay. <clears throat> so 
So with that double neutral placement, we do want to have some tools to defend our face with. Um, Pretty awkward also, we gotta kind of give up left side here. Oh, I go for the time? I guess... Times... I don't know what I was hoping to draw there, but... Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I needed to play the time there. There was nothing playable. I could have just played a next turn if I really wanted to top deck a seven. Bomb Slinger comes down. Sad. Uh, Double humbled the 2 3, and it was a winning play. <laughs> Those are very fun plays. Oh, right, wait, we played a mochi before? Oh no, I played the Herald. Oh, that's what, right, okay. Past me as well was a little more intelligent. <laughs> right, I forgot we played the um, Ancient Herald earlier, so we did actually have a playable 7 here. Right, okay, I probably was hoping for the Beirut top deck there then, because that would have been pretty nice in that position. Could have put a could have put the Beirut on left side that turn, uh, that previous turn. Uh, Zudika played the five three Firebringer, which is interesting. Quite focused on defending that face, but since that has been invested, I no longer need to go for the face game plan there. Um, I am on 10 HP, which is very sturdy as long as I don't lose any more life to creatures. I mean, that's gonna require triple flame burst plus a Cypher's Wrath to kill me, so in a decent spot. Um, the 4-4 comes in range of my Archon, so I'm very excited to top deck a 7 cost here if I can. Um, so I would like to draw here. There's an option to go for Mochi. Right, I can just go Mochi, and if I fail to draw the 7, then I could just Aurora. So I think Mochi is a fine play. I mean, that would require a pre-Aurora, but... Yeah, I mean, I think it's a fine play. And we do find it! Which is very nice. Very nice indeed. Get to dump the Phantasm, buff this 2-2, buffs the 6-6, six, six, and we get the value trade. Uh, not only that, but we're now contesting that center mountain with our Beiru too. So looking in a good spot. We still give that axe grinder the double collection, but kinda gotta defend face at this point. Can't really afford to take any more hits. <clears throat> Tempo plays are very exciting. Ah, <laughs> uh, so anything that he plays here is just gonna get pelted with a swarm of creatures. We find creation, so now we can start creating berries. Uh, I can't even put a berry face if I want. Oh, I don't have enough. Uh, right, so I just play the Herald. Herald is a little bit awkward. Um, because I gotta build another land. I would have loved that to be a Beiru so we can just walk over the ocean. Uh, 
Um, but whatever, I guess it's fine. I think the positioning was off. Yeah, I mean, we could have just put the 5-6 backwards to defend face a little bit longer and then sent the Beiru next turn. Um, we might not even get a Beiru though, like Bombslinger can come here. Uh, but also, Bombslinger can come here. <laughs> Bombslinger plus, like, Cypher's Wrath, and then... Uh-oh, I'm dead. <laughs> so that's not good. Yeah, positioning was a little bit off there. Okay, he builds another mountain, which is, gets transformed again. Uh... Uh, he's also provided me with that axe grinder, so I think trading off the Beiru is pretty solid here. We just need something else to defend our face, which I don't have, unfortunately. It might actually be worth playing Aurora. I wouldn't get to trans or I wouldn't get to creation the um Beiru though. Oh I do go for Aurora, okay. Yeah, I just need Hmm. Oh, I'm roaring this. Interesting. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I need something to protect my face because a neutral creature can come down here. Um, I guess that's okay. It would have had more value on the Phantasm, of course, but at least we're threatening the um, the E2 lands. And I mean, we keep Beiru alive, we get to creation it now. So that's cool. Herald E5 light lines up a two turn lethal. Oh, true. Yeah, you have a good point. Yeah, so E5 on this space here would give my um, uh, Archon a dashing land, or a charging land, so I could just use a double neutral setup to double hit. Of course, he had that creature there, but we could have followed up with another creature. Um, yeah, that would have been a good spot. Slinger and Wrath can't really be played in his hand at this point. That should really be a safe read. Plenty of opportunities to play this earlier. Uh, yeah, fair enough. He's been on two cards for a while here. We go for another Herald instead of Beiru. Wait, why didn't I play Beiru? Uh-oh. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, right, he's got no mountains at aggressive. Yeah, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Lucky me. I feel like Beiru was the play that last turn, though. I don't know why I went for the Herald instead. <clears throat> uh, we can creation our Phantasm here, and that should be pretty game winning. Two phantasms. How about two? And his only out here is draw into two flame bursts. Doesn't find it. Yeah, draw gave him the out. If you had top decked double flame burst there, I was dead. 
If I had gone for the Beiru that turn though, that was just game on the spot, right? He would have had to use... Yeah, he would have had to use the Firebringer defensively on his face, but then he wouldn't have been able to collect and draw into double burst. Could have body blocked the Mirror Phantasm collection to... Ah, uh, yeah, right, I went for the... Wait, could I have blocked that? That wasn't a lake, I think that was a... Neutral, wasn't it? Because I went for the draw, I drew into Windfall, and that gave me a 14 Faria. Pretty sure that was a neutral land, right? Yeah. Unless there was a neutral creature on board to creation, I don't think there was. No, everything was mountain or lake. You just needed 12 for the double creation. Oh, right. I didn't have to play a second Phantasm. True. I could just play the... I guess just the Aurora it had to be. <clears throat> yeah, so that was probably the play then. Creation the Aurora just to body block the collection space. So I go for the double collector. Um, Harold was also probably perfectly viable. <clears throat> but Zutica doesn't have anything, so I had to drop a thing. I, I can't remember, I think... Maybe there's a fear of uh, uh, Emperor Chaos in this list. I can't remember the colors. Because if Chaos is a fear, then we really want to try to contest as much space on the board as possible. But this little fish on the left side is going to be really difficult to contest without that Ancient Herald. Oh, it's a green-blue. Uh, right, it's combo. Yeah, so definitely want to go aggressive here. Play out of range of Gagana Meteor. As far as combo goes, he's got everything he could possibly want. The double collector setup uncontested. <clears throat> That's pretty cool. Seven cost windfall gives me the prox. Um, and the really cool step up with the 6-6 six, six lets me trade the structure and actually get some face damage in here. And we'll just play some more 6-6s. Six, Again, Gagana Meteor kind of spooky there, but... Uh, I don't think you have to worry too much. I got quite a bit of area. Right, I'll also... Didn't even pay attention to the colors that might not even be red in here. I 
This might just be Tarum into Oakfather into Enchant. <clears throat> and that's just a win. So we're two to one. <clears throat> one more match to win. Uh, there were some mountains in that list. There's three mountains, okay. So three mountains definitely could be Meteor. Could just be Ruby Yak. <clears throat> but three mountains? Could be Ruby Yak plus the Dream Keeper? Uh, so we're against a Twin Soul list. There are a lot of people playing Twin Soul. But with this Magnus opener, that should be pretty good. And all the swarm. Uh, might even be worth starting Lake Center here just to try and fight sides with Magnus. Do I go Lake Center? I do. Of course, I don't exactly have a playable Magnus yet. It's also vulnerable to something like... Well, I guess Frogify can't come down, but... Oh, do I actually go opposite? Okay. <laughs> Am I giving up on Magnus? <laughs> I mean, Phantasm can come down, I suppose. Uh, if we play Mochi, I don't get... Magnus. If I play anything, I don't get Magnus, unfortunately. So I'm gonna have to wait a little bit, I guess. I think I might have thought about Transform after the fact, and I was like, eh, Phantasm. Doesn't feel great. And we don't have to rush things anyways. Magnus can come down like uh, in a couple turns here. Farm Boy is always a win no matter the outcome. <laughs> True. <clears throat> yeah, so I tuck in between wells, because uh, this keeps my toad pretty safe. My opponent really doesn't want to invest double neutral to kill that. Um, when he's building up to six lands, and he's trying to take this aggressive uh, leg space as well. So we'll play just one Mochi, because I want to play this Magnus. Take it. Into Aurora. Another water alley. The three threes <clears throat> thankfully aren't gonna matter too much. Oh actually Soul Drain's the left one, not the right one. Uh... Hmm. So I could go double neutral here <clears throat> to take a collection, call a toad, drop the Magnus. Uh, we top decked the frog of- oh, I'm just running away. Okay. Right, I think I realized that Magnus face is just better than defensive. <clears throat> I mean... I don't know, I'm still gonna have to eat through these toads, but... Also, the 3-3s three are gonna be kinda 
problematic if they step aggressive, and I only have two twos, but he does have to invest a lot into killing this. I think it was also thinking about the Phantasm transform, and so a 5-5 aggressive looks a little bit better. <clears throat> Unplayable windfall, sad. Really important that we top deck the 7 card now though, before the Magnus hits, because otherwise we lose our Mochi discount. <clears throat> so invest the Lick, we get a creation, we get to creation that Magnus. Play a second Magnus. Very exciting. <coughs> <clears throat> and aggro's a little bit ambitious. I do end up going aggro, but I don't have answers to the 3-3. Three, three. So... That's interesting. Uh, though, if I put Magnus... I mean, I could have put Magnus on this neutral, and then I still have the double neutral option to fight stuff with. If he decides to run away. But I decide to go for more face hits, because more face hits look fun. He is gonna race. Whack, whack. Already down to 12. <coughs> now I still have the option- Oh, he's going super aggro. I still have the option to clear this 3-3 if I wish. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of sudden pressure out of nowhere. <laughs> and 9 HP, 3 little guys at our face. Very spooky. Um, and instead of defending my face, I decide to hit my opponent's face even harder, which is an interesting call. I definitely don't think I needed to do this. <laughs> I'm greeting a little bit too hard. Definitely could have just gone for double neutral somewhere in here and traded one of these guys, but we do find a phantasm, get rewarded. Um, now he's just got two little guys at our face, but... My only form of pressure here is two four fours, which... is not really enough to race here, funny enough. Even though they're two big Magnuses. Because 3 HP is very spooky. That could be like Wind Soldier existing. Or just another movement trick on that Origin Fanatic up top. <clears throat> and then I'm kind of dead. Or just more aggression too. The sky is only the beginning. Yeah, race racing is a bit ambitious on my part. I definitely did not need to do that. <laughs> Like, we don't even set up, um, <clears throat> a two-turn lethal. Well, oh, he ends up not blocking, but he could have easily just body blocked, and that prevents the two-turn lethal. Um, so... I think this is either a bit of a miss on his part, or if he's really confident he's gonna top deck another mobility trick, then that's fine. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I need to deal with all of the three power guys, and then just pray. <laughs> I could frogify the three two if I'm worried about. Oh, yeah, okay. I even actually just kill it, which takes away my race even harder. I guess I can also just, um, 
If I just whack face here, then I can just set up an aggressive creature and then it's probably still lethal. So maybe that's fair. We're on 24 Feria here. <laughs> Amazing. <clears throat> so Kaleem's training kills us. Uh, don't go for the creation. I guess I'm a little bit tight on time. Oh, it finds the Aurora, <clears throat> and there's the lethal. Yeah, so that was kind of my bad. <laughs> that match probably shouldn't have been lost. Creation on Fagora was super good here. Right. We had him on 16. Yeah, there's no, like, sneaky transform there, I guess. Creation of Fulgaro is pretty cool, yeah. <clears throat> uh, so there was no way I could have defended that, right? Yeah, I don't think so. At least not on that exact turn. I could have done things a bit differently. Hang on to one Wrangler. So this is the red, yellow, angry match. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this should do all right. Hello, PC. You had a full defend that turn? Did I have an option to fully defend that turn? I don't think so. I, I remember trying to think about it. I was trying to find a way that I could deal with the 2-2 there. Um, and like maybe I could frogify my own creature or something. <clears throat> but I just didn't have enough creatures. Oh, but maybe I could have fully protected my face? Mm. Uh, it's... Possible. I'm not sure. I remember the 5 6 was being blocked by a creature here. You, you know, it'd be really funny if we went fro. Oh, wait. Hang on, hang on. I want to go back a little bit. There might actually be a line here. <laughs> okay, so this is the turn. Now, hear me out. This is pretty silly. What if we pre hit the. Th Three, two. We frogify our phantasm. We hop the toad over, and then we creation the phantasm to transform our f toad back into the phantasm. <laughs> Wait, that actually works. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Okay, so here's the line. We sit here. <clears throat> we just trade the three, two. Then we frogify our five, three. It's now a battle toad. We hop it over to where the 3 2 used to be. Then we creation our, our phantasm. We play the phantasm, transforming our now battle toad over here. And then we trade the Fogoro. And then this space is now open. Then we just value trade the 3 3. And boom, we win. <laughs> that is such a silly line. <laughs> I love it. Oh, it's beautiful. I think that was the out. Like, I don't think Creation Fogaro does anything here. Like, it, it helps me draw into more stuff, sure, but we needed to defend against that um, Aurora play. So that was just body blocking face. And I think that's the only way to do it. I guess I. Right, I could also just frogify this and kill the 3 2 and then step. But that's less exciting. <laughs> I like the frogify into Creation Phantasm line better. Alright, let's go back to this. We'll do a good night poetry later. <laughs> right, and then you would have went for medallion line, but yeah. Yeah, I suppose it was still possible with the Fogoro. Um, because all I needed was the Frogify then to trade the 3-2. <clears throat> okay, so here 
I pre-invest the campfire. I remember Lizard, you were um, questioning this play. Uh, I don't think it's bad at all just pre-investing, because this allows my Demon Wing to really step up left side and contest these land investments. Um, I know it's nice to have it as a flexible tool, but... <clears throat> This also encourages him to run away so that I get more Garrett in value potentially, um, which I don't mind. I do step up the 5-2, but I know that he's playing some greedy lands, so he probably doesn't want to double neutral. He can just play water early though. I think the step up was kind of strange. Yeah, he can just play water early. So that was a bad step up, especially if I want to go for Garrett in. But he does not find it, just finds a soul drain instead. Finds a fanatic, so there's the great Garridan value. You want him to fight same side? Do I? Oh, because of my creatures. <clears throat> I don't know, Garridan's pretty nice here though, isn't it? I guess if he had played like a water alley, then Garridan's less good. Perhaps, perhaps. It worked out though. Uh, it would have been worse for sure if there was a th 3 HP body on board, but... <clears throat> didn't happen. This is great now too. He's swarming on left side, so we get to Thunder Eel one of them, step onto the land, and then we get to produce our Axe Grinder space. And I think I end up taking the 1-1 uh, here as well. Um, <clears throat> he has lined up 6-6 six, six stats to trade this Garrett in, but he's got to invest the land, so it seems more than worth it just to take out the Collector and collect myself. And set up another Collector anyways. The campfire paying off on like, turn 5. Garridan was great here, yeah. <clears throat> so, I mean, he had to build that land anyways. He needed to go up to six, but it really limits his draw options. And triple X grinders, amazing. Another collector. The mountain was put here just so Garridan could, could contest all of the lands. Um, I figured it wouldn't matter too much with the eel that I had in hand as a follow-up. And probably these axe grinders are going aggressive at some point. Though it would have been a little... Uh, yeah, it would have been a little bit different if he was, if he was able to body block here with like... Again, a 3-3 body or something. Then these axe grinders would be a lot less good positioning wise. <clears throat> uh, so we could dump a Firebringer here. I'm actually going to invest the land just so that I guarantee that I get a face hit, even with the Iona. And Axe Grinder is no longer even good to play anymore. We've got two massive Firebringers. We've been outscaled. And this should be too much pressure to handle. The sky is only the beginning.
<laughs> okay, and then two turn lethal. And uh, that's a pretty obvious win, so we'll skip past. <clears throat> Finds one phantasm. And we boop him in the end. So that was round of eight. So we'll move on to semifinals. Uh, against Zote. <clears throat> Looking to ban the 6.9 red list, that's going to be... Like, maybe bargain, but with bomb slingers in there. Um, I don't think that's the ban. That shouldn't be too bad. Pro probably the yellow list. I mean, I don't know. I don't really. I'm always afraid of the unknown. <laughs> when somebody brings a 6.9 red list with bomb slinger cover, I don't know what that is. <laughs> But a 3.2 yellow list, that's in my comfort zone. So I guess we're gonna lock that one in. We have some counters to yellow stuff anyways. Um, I guess. I mean, yellow rush is actually kind of tricky. Well, the sevens list should do alright, I guess. Twin Soul is, like, not very good into that. Burn is good, but... I guess it depends what's banned. He bans the sevens, actually. <clears throat> interesting. And I actually start with Red Yellow Burn, which is also interesting. I feel like I want to save that burn list for the rush. Bit of a bold choice, actually. Assuming this is Rush, I mean, this could be something else, but would like to at least uh, consider that option. But um, I do end up starting with the burn, and he starts with the green, which is typically a hard counter. It's a counter, so mono green hard counters mono red like if you're doing mono red mid-range combat stuff um burn it counters less so it's still a counter but burn can actually deal some indirect damage so it's uh it's a playable matchup uh pretty excellent hand though the classic combat creature into training movement trick Turn four. <clears throat> and Zoe builds a forest center, so he gets to choose what side he wants to go down. Um, starting center land, I find, is really good actually, as the green player. If you're playing like Mono Green Beastmaster or something, um, this allows you to play a taunt in the center in the future if you want, just to guard against um, Scourge Flame or something. Uh, that creature's a living willow. One unfortunate thing about Mono Green Beastmaster is a lot of their early stats are pretty weak in power. So he dumps the Aridin. Um I go for a pretty expensive play here, but I think it's worth it. So, I'm looking to double wrath this, I think. I think that's what I do. So, there's an option to just training and straight trade into it. Um, I don't know, as the burn list, I really want to get a lot of face damage as early as possible. Uh, also, getting the fanatics on board is really nice, because fanatics just represent extra damage. Extra face damage. 
also, if I trade this, I mean, it's not a big deal. If I trade this, it's in range for Living Willow to take it, but not that big a deal. The big deal really is, I guess, just Emperor's Commands. Um, so I want to keep this guy alive. I go for the Double Wrath and the Fanatic. To get the face hits. Stream with no delay, that's a first. It's actually a delay of 12 days. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, this is a... We're watching an old tournament uh, stream. Like, 12 days old. <clears throat> a little bit of a delay. But we get to be live with chat, which is kind of cool. Uh, he did get the Aridin buffs now, so big creatures coming. <clears throat> and now there's a 6-7 boar on board. doing with the desert. I want to put the Grimguard aggro, probably. Grimguard in the top left corner is really juicy because <clears throat> uh, well, because there's a living willow standing there and also even if the willow gets like feeded or something, this ancient beastmaster has to take two hits into it which feels bad for him. I am looking to get another face hit here. I've already got him down to f Oh, right, this Grimguard is also um, getting buffed with the combat hit. So he's actually a 3-6. And I'm just going to dump him here as a 3-6. And then Fnatic for more damage. I think I could have went for the 4-7 stat line um, just to play out of range of this Ancient Boar. Uh, so that might be a bit of a miss. Unless I'm afraid of, like, Voice of Truth or something, but... <clears throat> this is also in range of a single buff. He could just, uh, Runin's... Well, if he uses Runin's Guidance, I guess I'm pretty happy if he's using that as a buff, huh? But yeah, I think I probably just wanted to play out of Ancient Boar one-shot range. Because if this Grim Guard gets two combat hits, I'm in a pretty good spot. I'm already in a good spot. We've dealt a lot of face damage. He does end up Voice of Truthing. Okay, so I guess I was correct to not... Um, uh, play it as a force, Evan. We get to save, conserve our combat hit for the next combat creature. Voice of Truth, not even really that good here, though. Doesn't really accomplish that much. <clears throat> Must not have just had anything else in hand, because he, he actually literally didn't even need to do that, right? Because he's already got the 6-2 boar lined up to kill. I mean, the, I guess that boar is probably dying, but... I don't know. The 5 to 6 threshold is not going to be a big deal anymore since... Um, since he got the Aridin buffs. And Beastmaster's living here too. Right, so I'm debating here which land to step on. Um, and I think it's pretty obvious, honestly, that this space on E2 is the better land, because this allows me to move and then get a mobility trick into face here. Um, I end up going for the center. For some reason, I feel like contesting the, uh, Beastmaster. Um, I don't actually want to contest it. I'm, like, hoping that he just skips a collection from that, but... 
realistically, the space isn't doing anything. I could have just stayed on the mountain and threatened that extra damage. Because we, we do have him on 6 HP with the Grimgrind still alive, but... Uh... Yeah, I mean, it's still possible to lose this if he top decks, like, double healing. <clears throat> but, bit of a miss, he... Plays the Grove Guardian, does not step the Living Willow out of the way, so uh, I still get to hit into the Living Willow one more turn. And we top deck the Flashwood. Sad. Of course, I couldn't actually hit there, I guess, because the Taunt was in the way, but uh, that was still definitely an option. Um, I hop up to collect, mostly because I figure this blocks his collection and he doesn't want to stand here probably to get combat hit. Just surrenders anyways, um, which is very fair. Yeah, so Burn actually taking its first victory. Very cool. So we're probably going to get countered by the green, blue. Oh, really? Zode countering with yellow. Interesting. Not the green, blue. Typically, anything green would be the counter that you want to bring. Um, I suppose this is Rush, then. Right, and I was thinking I wanted to hold this as the counter to this exact list, so... Pretty happy to see this matchup. It might not actually be Rush, I, I can't remember anymore. Scourge Flame. Scourge Flame top deck is not terrible to see. Even though it's six, um, four turns away, uh, you still really want to top deck Scourge Flame at least once in your game, probably. We didn't have to last game, but we got a really lucky early game, so. Uh, Scourge Flame's kind of a necessary piece in the end. We had Choking Sanded here, so it's not actually Rush. And we get punished super hard for playing the 5 cost. I was actually debating playing Grimguard to bait out the Choking Sand or the Shedim, but I was like, nah, this has got to be Rush. He's not going to play. Not going to play that. Red Yellow Burn has a pretty hard time into anything remotely fast usually. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Actually, Red Yellow Burn has a pretty hard time in general. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, so I really would love to have the Shed and Brood on board rather than this Grimguard, because that's uh, a value trade potentially waiting to be happen, uh, waiting to happen in the future. I'm debating the Flame Burst Wrath at some point. I only have four Faria here, but Flame Burst Wrath is an option to kill the Double Collector. I think it's a little bit slow on the next turn, though. Definitely just want to save these for burn tools. If I had the Faria to spend there... Like, if I hadn't gotten Choking Sanded, um... It might have been worth it, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe not. We're closing in on Scourge Flame Spectre lands though, so this should be a pretty passive, just land up and wait. I am still debating the Flame Burst Wrath, I guess, here. Um, I don't really think it's necessary. I could play Origin Fnatic here if I want, just to get extra damage on board. Um, that would not be a terrible play because Soul Drain would have to be the answer and then he doesn't heal anything from it actually. Um, 
and I could even put the fanatic like on the center space to threaten this double collection. Realistically though, this Manta does want to just go aggro here, because against burn you do want to just go fast. Plays a second Manta Rider, and yeah, steps up the other one aggressive. So I was really waiting for like something, some use of this fanatic, but uh, we do get the Scourge Flame. I think it's just worth it to fanatic. The awkward thing is that the stat line just does not trade very well into Mantas. Though I suppose it doesn't necessarily have to, all it needs is to do a little bit of a hit and then it um, gives me a Wrath target. Another option though too is I have three mobility tricks in hand, that might be a Grimguard waiting to go face at some point. I could actually just move this Grimguard up. Um, which might be a play. I kind of like that too. We can step up the Grimguard and then just Fnatic here and then push him up again. Um, but I just do nothing. So we're in risk of taking 10 damage here with a champion. Which is very spooky. I'm actually in a honestly pretty bad spot. His answer to the Scourge is um, Wind Soldier Soul Drain, which makes me pretty happy. That's uh, still three damage I get to poke in with the combat hit, and then he just gets to heal two. But no champion goes for the neutrals. For some reason, builds. I, I don't really understand the neutrals actually. The kind of strange. Um, builds neutrals for his flyers to land on. He's just being very kind to his flyers. Doesn't want them to have to flap their wings so hard. We do find a training, which is cool, and then top deck a guard. So I can just go face with this um, Grimguard now. I do really think I could have played that Fnatic much earlier in the game, just as extra damage on boards. Instead of waiting so long, but... Here we are. And so that is 5 damage, and we get to set up a taunt. Um, still have that Flame Burst waiting in hand, and the Wrath. So this is going to be an extra 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 damage. 7 damage, all just in hand here. Um, because he's pretty much- oh, actually, 9 damage because he's got that Shaden Demon on board. So, as long as I get one combat in here somewhere and there's no healing, um, I actually just have a guaranteed lethal here. Uh, also as long as, like, um... Choking Sand doesn't come down. I guess I just trade with the 3 2 then. Yeah. Should I have not gone between wells and just gone tempo here? I th think so. The Manta was delayed one turn because you went between wells. I mean, in hindsight, it's easy to see because you're on 7 here and. Not doing anything with that Faria. Um, but I think, yeah, against Burn, you need to go pretty tempo, pretty fast. Especially if cards in the list exist like Shade and Demon, which is um, pretty bad into the Burn matchup rates. Oh, right, I guess this is like a yellow tempo list or something, right? So maybe actually Champion doesn't exist. But yeah, the double collection was a little bit slow. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I had all the answers in hand. So we just 
when so that's game two that burn gets to gobble up but now we are against the green blue which typically would be the unfavored match I mean everything's unfavored let's be honest <laughs> I think, um, though, I will say, Red Yellow Burn can be a tricky one to pilot. I mean, sorry, the uh, Countering bur Red Yellow Burn can be a tough one to pilot if you haven't played that matchup much before. And we haven't really seen this archetype much before, too. Uh, once you know how to pilot it, I think it's pretty easy, but it, yeah. Because this is the issue that a lot of players have with a lot of different archetypes, I feel, like Husk, Carassius, and then Red Yellow Burn. You really have to just change your game plan. Um, something that's just like almost completely different from your normal game plan. I think a lot of like players are uncomfortable doing that, and then... Yeah. But that is the game we live in. Which is really interesting in my mind about Faria. How you have to actually change your game plan, it's not just set in stone all the time. Midrange decks can't always be midrange. <clears throat> okay, so my hand isn't looking amazing here. So I decide to go for the side land, um, just because I know he's Probably green, blue jump, or... Oh, never mind, I go center. <laughs> okay, uh, there was a debate to go side there, though, because he is either green, blue jump, or green, blue beast. Uh, probably beast. Um, if it's green, blue jump, it would be nice to not give him the hopping land. So that's what the side land's good for. It forces more land investments. If it is beast, though, I think I would actually like the center land, because taunt is good. Uh, actually a Rick Cohen comes down. Oh, right, this is... Uh, green, yellow, uh, green, blue swarm. Right, so that's why you didn't pick this list. This is a swarm list. And we're gonna Wrath to... make this Rick Cohen swim. Doesn't get his double collection. If we don't collect, you don't get to either. And so this uh, Iona Smile in here is only a one of. Now this is solely to draw into Scourge Flame Spectre because it's just such a good win condition for the deck. Uh, so there's no reason to like play into deserts. Um, like I, I could build deserts first to try and go for Fnatic as a collector, but. Uh, it's really not necessary, and especially when Deepwood Stalker is a threat, uh, Origin Frenetic's just really unnecessary. We top deck a Scourge Flame, so this is looking like a triple Scourge Flame game. We're just not gonna play anything the whole game except for Scourge. Now as the swarm list, it is a little trickier, like you're a bit of a more greedy list, so it might be correct to go double collection, I'm not sure. Because I don't know if you can win with just a 3-4. <laughs> right, I think, uh, like I remember the end game of this one, which was pretty exciting. Uh, so I think you piloted it well. Uh, we get the Spirit of Rebirth, and a 3-4 steps back. So, top deck of Flame Burst. Uh, yeah, so like in normal lists, like if this was a mid-range list, you would oftentimes like throw this Flame Burst into cards like the Spirit, but I think, um, here... Like, in a burn list, you really want to save all these burn tools. Burn is like almost like a combo deck. You're comboing all these burn pieces together to kill your opponent. If you're using them on, um... 
board control. Like, you can never fully board control, so this is just absurdly expensive. Um, I also play the Iona Smile here, and not too, like, obviously I'm not going to be able to play all these Scourge Flames uh, next turn, but I play it solely for deck filtering so that I can draw into, like, combat creatures potentially, or uh, more likely, like, Cypher's Wrath is what I'm looking for here. Just in case anything small comes down. Uh, and I think that's correct. Because the worst case, I also just play like multiple Scourge Flames in future turns. I, I, I would much rather be spending all of my Fairy on Scourge rather than other tools like. Shed and Brute, the garbage stat line. He does end up playing the 1-1. One, one. Gonna try to get some buffs with these double spirits. Uh, I, do con I do top deck a combat creature, but one thing that is nice about the combat creature is that I, it is actually playable here with a Scourge, because I'm on 12. So I can just play this the Shed and Breed. Oh. Wait. What? Oh, I'm not on Scourge lands yet. Right, okay, fair enough. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, so the, the deck filtering worked out, because I could have top decked another Scourge there instead of the Breed. Um... Deck filtering, pretty cool. Why are you playing Brute here? Is it not good? I guess I... Eh, maybe I do just save my Faria for more Scourges. Maybe that's true. <laughs> Instead of just opting for double Scourge next turn. Yeah, no, 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 you're right, you're right. The... I literally said earlier, too, I don't want to play this garbage style line. I'd rather play more Scourge. <laughs> um... I guess I'm hoping to block the collection, is the idea, but... Yeah, five fairy is just so expensive. I'd much rather spend seven. And then we get Aurora rough. Stalker would be huge here. That would, like, that would just really shut me down. Oh, okay, well he finds an answer anyways. This is just a more expensive stalker. Yeah, so that hurts. That hurts a lot, especially with that five fairy investment that just got value traded. Uh, yeah, so Shed and Brew was just a bad play here. Big ouch. And now I can't even double Scourge. I don't have the collections. <clears throat> we'll build the aggressive desert. It does give him a stepping land, but uh, I figure it's just a good land to have for the future. And we'll just value trade this... 2-2. Two, two. Since there's no face potential. And that one one's stuck in the middle of nowhere. Ready to get value traded a second time. But pretty... <laughs> epic play here. Upcoming. So he steps on all the lands, very sad. Though I can just uh, Scourge Flame value hit this thing and then Cypher's Wrath it to open up the space if I want. So we get a massive Fagoro, 
The 7 9 for Goro. Into more swarm. Into big gift of Rakoa. Massive 9 damage. Insane. And now I am looking not so good. <laughs> So, uh, pretty much I need to play a taunt here, 100%. What I'm thinking about on this turn though is, um, if I build a mountain onto E1 here, uh, here, let me just, uh, fast forward to one play. Oh yeah, so I'm just debating where I want to move the mountain. Now I'm probably thinking of moving the Scourge Flame away, probably to combat hit this. To cipher his wrath and then also get a scourge out. Well, I can't really do that. Uh, right, I'm thinking of collecting instead. So I want to move this off the neutral. I build it on the neutral because if I build it on the ocean, the Figoro gets to hop over, value trade, and then a single buff wins him the game. So I want to play around that by building it on the explorer, take away that hopping potential. He can still do it, of course, but he needs to invest the land, which means he can't draw for more answers. And so, this just takes away the simple, I need a top deck buff to win the game. And the Scourge Flame going passive here, uh, yeah, that just lets me collect. Uh, actually, it lets me get two collections over these two turns. Um, and I still get to get the damage at the end of the day, so... Um, being patient with the Scourge Flame I think will pay off. So he does build the land, takes the value hit. Is there a buff in those one of two cards in hand? Or a Ninja Toad. Ninja Toad also wins in the game here. And it's a Frog Tosser, so I actually lose out on one collection. Um, but because he didn't have the buff, and I top deck the Flame Burst. Flame Burst, Flame Burst, plus one into Cypher's Wrath, that is eight damage. Incredible top deck. <laughs> Absolutely insane. And I didn't end up having to play the second Scourge after all. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, Zet. That was a pretty brutal uh, top deck. <laughs> Though, uh, I feel like I need to change my vocabulary. I'm saying the exact same words, huh? <laughs> Okay, so we actually 3-0 sweep there with the uh, red, yellow, angry. Pretty crazy. Uh, I'm gonna hang that deck up and never play it again. <laughs> so, wait, is this the finals? Oh yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, yeah, that was semis. So now we're in the finals against Mardis with quad Aurora deck covers, amazing. And now I don't wanna face Crassius, but uh, there's of course two Crassius lists here. Can't ban them all. So we'll just ban the real deck. One nice thing here though, Mardis is forced to ban the red yellow burn. Cause he just loses to it, right? I mean, I, I... Yeah, his other two lists are mono blue. Um, I guess he's not forced to ban it, but if he does want the Crassius to survive... The thing is, I'm playing two really slow decks in this lineup. Uh, which should be pretty good into Crassius, and then all I have is the Red, Yellow, Angry, which is... I don't know, maybe it's okay. <laughs> but... I think he does end up banning the burn. I think that just makes sense anyways. The Crassius should be a pretty strong deck into this lineup with the burn gone. So I'm gonna start with Twin Soul. <clears throat> no, I start with Angry? Really? I uh, feel like I wanted to save that Angry for the Crassius, but... Yeah, okay. So we're going against Mono Blue.
Wait, how are we on final? Oh, this is a long finals. I was like, I've only been streaming for like, not even two hours, and this was a four hour stream. So this is a long one. <laughs> Strap yourselves in, kids. <clears throat> really cool opener play here with the double collection. Outland Ranger into Demon Wrangler. Uh, hates eats. <clears throat> A lot of early pressure. Uh, we top decked the Iona, so we might as well play the Iona. Um, I'm considering taking the Mystic Beast spot away, and then we step back just because Emperor's Command exists. I mean, even Humbling Vision would probably be solid if I were to stand there. And the 5-2 doesn't really want to step up into Toad range. Sunken Dower Toads. I could do the campfire play again, so the reason I'm not doing the campfire play on this turn is because, um, I mean, in the last game I had Garadin, which was mainly the thing I wanted to spook the toads away to Garadin into. Here, there's a lot of pressure on left side that I need to defend, so I really need this as a fighting tool. Um, I don't think it would be very good on the demon, like, pre-campfire would be pretty bad here. And especially now that the 4-2's been invested. <clears throat> so I can probably just slow play this a little bit. Yeah, just keep drawing for more creatures to play. And I'm just gonna swarm left side, clog that up, and this Iona's really helping to be a little body blocker. I think I might consider the ranger campfire. Um, just because that is a nice stat line into both the Triton Warrior and the Battletoads. And we step out of range of... Um, step out of range of a movement trick with the 4-2. Of course he still does have that with the Toad, but then he doesn't get to collect off my well and discount Colossus. <coughs> Uh, of course, he still can value trade the 2-1 with the 4-4, and then I don't really have a clean answer. Follow-up. But, eh, I don't really have a clean answer anyways. Hmm. Maybe I didn't need the campfire buff. I don't know. Well, if... Like, then he double neutrals, then he just trades the toad in. And then the 4 4 values. And then we're just in a worse spot, I guess. Oh, what? Wait. That is crazy. Actually, he just takes the 4 4 out to get an Aurora here. Was that even worth it? Hmm, I don't know if that was worth it, to be honest. I think he could have just waited. Um, that was just a free value trade, I think. Like, he lost a... He just lost a free unit that he could have saved. Uh, I guess the Tutus were forced to, like, retreat or something. I mean, even you could... Take the value trade and then... You could just even Aurora to... Right, there was no space. 
Yeah, I don't know. Have to rewatch that heart wrenching Twin Soul vs. Gracias game again? <laughs> oh no. Uh... Alright, I think I'm just thinking of hate seeding here, which means I want to win soldier. Does mean I want to win soldier campfire. Which is a bit awkward, potentially. Play fast, play fast. Play the one, play the second. Yeah, I mean, we get to swarm this way. I don't know if that was the correct line. I was running out of time there. Um, I lose the campfire buff from doing this. It's just a four cost removal. Uh, Would have been nice if I could have collected. Not a huge deal since I'm on six here, but... Um, what were the other options? If I didn't command the toad, then I lose my Iona, so... And there was no way to just, like, wind soldier collect. Yeah. I guess that was just the line. I had to clear the mountain space to play the double uh, hate seeds. I think the double hate seeds also gives me quite a bit of initiative here. Um, if I leave the toad on board, I kind of lose a lot of tempo, a lot of pressure. So yeah, I think it was necessary to clear the toad and just dump all these creatures here. Now it's really awkward for him to play anything. Like I was gonna build a lake center just to play a creature. Which is also a four cost removal. But this time is to clear a two HP, so I mean we traded four cost removal for four cost removal. Pretty happy with that. And now we just need an eel top deck. And we're sitting pretty. Oh look at that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this looks like just eel trade. It would be lovely to eel the right sides and then just use the eel stats to trade this Tide Lord, but... Actually, is that what I go for? I can't even remember. Because, uh, I mean, this Tide Lord technically can't collect if I body block all the spaces, but... Ooh, I think I might go for it. Okay, so we're playing four well collections here. Uh, this doesn't really work though, because the f oh, I'm thinking of just trading off the Iona here. Yeah, um, this is pretty weak to Emperor's Command. This line. And I also just give him the collection space anyways to hop on, so yeah, this line was just kind of bad. <laughs> yeah, I was really hoping to get the 6-4 trading into the Tide Lord or the 4-3 plus the 2-1, but it's just so weak to Emperor's Command. I think that was just a bad play. And then he body blocks my collection space too. What are you doing, Moon? Grinder B1, yeah, Grinder B1 could have even been better to r actually block those collection spaces and have a fighter. And Step Hate Seed C2. Yeah, there's a lot that I could have done better there. I mean, so that was the potential play. I could have gone for also just straight up kill the Tide Lords. 
I mean, the 4-2 was off here doing nothing really. He could have easily double collected with a double neutral, but it's really light on cards. I don't know. That was just a really bad, almost game losing play to be honest. Like that one mistake is costing me a lot here. This is really bad. <clears throat> I kind of am just forced to trade the Tide Lord here, I think, because I don't have a clear on the Colossus. Um, I'd rather not get double hit, so. Um, we go for the Demon Wrangler. This does give me a Demon Wrangler able to hit face without the requirement of land building. But this Colossus gets to sidestep here and whack me twice in the face, at least. I was more concerned with him hitting face for six and dropping Colossus F1. Right, he could have done that here too, right? Um, because I let the 6-6 six, six live, he could have just sidestepped, hid face, dropped Colossus, and suddenly I'm staring down a lethal next turn that I gotta answer. Uh, yeah, so Martis did go for the value trade play when he was behind on board. Um, that is a really good opportunity to race when you're behind. Because it is extremely difficult to come back on board if you're going for control lines. Find, find a Fnatic, which is huge. You get to take out this Colossus. And hope for a four turn lethal. <laughs> yeah, I can't step on this lake. He's gotta stand there. The Wind Soldier makes me feel comfortable though. If this 12-3 gets answered by something, I don't know what, it's just really ninja toad. Then I at least have a clear on the 4-4. Four four. But this game <clears throat> didn't nearly need to be as close as it was. Whack. Uh, so I can set up a lethal here if I just go for the ag aggressive axe grinder, I think. Seems pretty worth it. <clears throat> and might as well just trade the 12-3. <coughs> Super awkward to maneuver my creatures around. So we just set up the lethal, uh, the origin fanatic is up there also to kill any body blockers if need be. Uh, should be pretty solid. Healing was an option there, healing into like another colossus or something. Uh, there was potentially some outs. So now he's countering with the Carassius. More of a good window because he runs zero cards in hand and red yellow angry has a notoriously hard time playing reactive. Yeah. Definitely. I have a lot more wind soldiers in this list and barters um, than I think you have in the li in your list. But barter is not a very good reactive tool in the uh, <laughs> blue jump matchup. To be fair.
We have Garrett in our opening hand, which is really excellent for this matchup. Probably just want to step on the gas a little bit and double neutral up. I mean, uh, Garridan's cool, but I don't think Garridan's gonna win us the entire matchup alone. Oh, I go for a really slow play here. I think I don't actually realize this is Carassius. I think I just thought this was like another swarm list. Just sad. You like the double land here? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I realized this was Carassius. I thought I had banned the Carassius list. And I was like, okay, I'll just slow play this. I would value you later. <laughs> But we double land here, just a little bit slower. <laughs> and then the Biomancer comes down, so it's pretty obvious that is Crassius now. Apparently it's the newest fuzz. <laughs> yeah, I thought we had killed Carassius when Illusionist was nerfed, but uh, people are still playing it a lot. I'm so smart, I astound myself. At least it's not as oppressive as it once was. That was a that was a not so fun meta. <laughs> Two Biomancers, so there's almost undoubtedly some Carassius in hand. Does not play it though. Though that is a lot of pressure. So I think I just consider a double neutral again here to get some aggressive land placements. Show me these guys around, and we'll build our final mountain aggressive somewhere. Not ready to accept that an actual 8 land Crassius list is supposed to be good. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I misplayed the early game in this match. Um, Could have been a little bit faster. But yeah, Aeolan Crassius should not be good, that is fair. <laughs> Steps out the Biomancer, drops an Agro Mountain. Which is just a cannon. I mean, he's got all the tools he could want in hand because of the double bio. So this is just gonna be like a board wipe here. Sadly, Garadin is not looking very impactful. Doesn't actually, um... Kill the second... Uh, Demon Wing, so... Not a full board wipe. That's nice. <laughs> I could do Garrett in here, 
But it really doesn't do that much, so I guess we're just going for eel. It's hard to know where to put these damage pings. I mean, killing the 2-2 here makes Garridan less valuable, but the 2-2 is kind of threatening. Like, I mean, I gotta answer it in some some regards. And just pass, I guess. We could dump a Hade Seed, I guess, in Intimidate... Uh, predicting a future creature being played here. I guess the Hade Seed was correct. Or how much are the fire Firebringers now? I'm not sure. Oh, Firebringers have to be 6. 6 HP. Plays a Spirit Theft, so I kind of played a little bit hard into Spirit Theft there. Whoops. Lands are so awkward this game. Yeah, my lands really are. This desert on left side hurt me so much, actually. It's just such a useless land investment, this game. And the first Crassius comes down. <clears throat> Yikes. So, I mean, this kind of looks like a Gary play. I don't know. I'm just kind of in a bad spot now. Like, Crassius aside, I'm just in a bad spot. Well, actually, no. Not Crassius aside. If Crassius didn't exist, I could comfortably play Gary here. Um, the awkward thing is, playing Gary here means... We lose out on Crassius potential later. Okay, so I am just gonna play casual cards. Uh, wait. Did I miss order? Oh. Oh, I'm just going for more Firebringer buffs. That wasn't enough, though. <laughs> I needed 9 HP. Oh, I needed actually 10 HP because he's got the 1 3 in the way. Okay. Aren't you just winning here with Gary regardless? How? Doesn't he just infinitely play Crassius now? Like, he's going up to, even if I Gary here, he guarantees eight Feria here and nine if he wants it. Uh, that's just a Crassius creation. Like, Garridan, B4, and Tempo Bringer. Um, the Tempo Firebringer gets one shot by the... the 8-8 eight eight though, doesn't it? And then he just... Crassius swarms, creations it, and then I lose? I don't know. I guess it's better than waiting. Trading the champion is fine. I mean, I don't think it's a winning play, but maybe it's m <laughs> a better chance than this play. Because here I had to put the Firebringer passive, which is still on 8 HP. We lose to a third Cannoneer. And then we're never going to get the pressure applied anyways, so... I don't know. Maybe it was a window that... I just don't see how it does anything, though, because he plays two Crassius. It's a guarantee he's got them in hand, because of the bios. And then the two Crassius just trade the Garridan off, and suddenly I've got zero pressure. I mean, I got one Firebringer. But the one Firebringer is going to be, what, 9 HP? Uh, which is, like, not that difficult to deal with. Especially if he creations the Crassius, he just swarms again, so that I've got no in to his face. Because I, there's no way that I can do that. I guess... can I plant a mountain? 
I guess I could plant a mountain and put the Firebringer on face, but then he gets to Karasius Swarm again with that creation. So that's four Karasius that I can't do anything about, and then just all four straight up trade the Firebringer. So I just end up losing regardless. No, I think the real mistake in this game was just the left desert here. That just set me back so far. We do get an opportunity to play the guy now because he stepped the 8-8 out of range. You're fine in the second wave? You're triple collecting in that case and putting him on one. Right, I had the 2 1 open, but does the collection matter? I don't think it matters. Look, like, like he's got all the fairy he needs, right? On that turn, he had 9. Or did he have to plus 1? Maybe he didn't have the third lake bolt, actually. Maybe he only had 8 there. Hmm. Could have been an important threshold. It does matter. Yeah, actually, he was on 2 lakes there, wasn't he? So maybe he was on two lakes and eight Feria, which means you can't actually creation Carassius. Hmm, interesting. All right, I see it. That line was potentially viable then. Of course, he probably just has the third copy in hand. Um, not a guarantee though. I don't know. It was, it was probably the best chance I had, to be fair. Um, and I mean, this is pretty obviously a loss. Uh, unless Mortis horribly misplays, this is uh, gonna be a tough one to, <laughs> to lose for him. And I just spent all my Faria here, so no more Garadin. Uh, we can skip through. The Demon Wing right side gets traded off. He plays Creation on another uh, champion, which makes this Garrodin even more worthless because he's not actually going for the Karasius game plan anymore. He's just investing fully into these champions. So yeah, now Garrodin's just useless. I feel like you're overestimating how fast Crassius can scale. Um, it can scale really fast when you have the Faria for it, which he did there. Oh, like, he didn't have it exactly that lined up that turn, but... Um... It's very fast to scale when you don't have an in on face. And as soon as my one Firebringer dies, or my second one, I guess, then I no longer have any ways of hitting face, right? That was on 9 HP, so that's uh, 11 power. Like, I have to find 9 damage somehow. And that's, like, pretty much got to be indirect damage. Uh, I mean, I got 3 Wind Soldiers, I guess. <laughs> but that doesn't really help. So yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I just end up surrendering. And we move on. Move on to sevens. <clears throat> Two grinders still in the deck. <clears throat> I just don't really see it. I think it can scale very fast once you've traded off two sets of Crassius already. Because he was going to be able to comfortably play the second set, right? Zero eels played. Yeah. I mean, that line was a potential out. It definitely was a potential. I think it was still pretty rough. Um, it would have been a lot better had I built my lands correctly, though. Built the lands correctly, plus that play, potentially. Then I've got more aggressive line placements. Hmm. <clears throat> so 
So I go for a mountain. I think I'm thinking this match I've got Frogifies and Phantasms, so maybe I can just... Frogify the first... Crestus. I don't know. I only have two Frogifies on the list. Uh... <clears throat> So we go for double collection. I mean, um, Magnus could be pretty solid. <clears throat> I could have also maybe gone aggressive. I'm not really sure. I kind of want to see where he invests his lands first. And then just dodge sides or something. I'm so, smart, I astound myself. so the Crassius comes down already, which does let me dodge him now. So I could double neutral left side here. And that's actually not terrible. Pretty much only play Mountain the turn you decide to opt for Garden. Yeah, I, I invested it because I was calculating where my land placements would be. I was like, I need to build four lands. I might as well do that. Wait, what am I doing? Wait, what? Was I high? <laughs> Wait, why did I do this? This makes zero sense. Eh. Lost a lot of power wheel actions that way. I guess I could have just opted for double neutral, maybe. Wait, I don't understand why I decided to fight. That makes no sense. I could have just retreated the 1 1, double neutral left side. What am I hoping to achieve here? Interesting. Well, that was a very questionable play. Any creations? Hmm. I really wanted to protect that farm boy, apparently. <clears throat> wow, I'm really angry at myself for this play. <laughs> this was... This was just brain dead. <laughs> Well, we do find the Frogify a little bit late, though, after the first Crassius has been downed. Um, so that's no good. We top deck a Phantasm. Uh, <laughs> I think I decided to transform both of them. <laughs> the Crassius broke you, actually, Cursed. It did break me. It completely broke my resolve. To be fair, I was sick <laughs> during this tournament. I was pretty sick, so I... Probably was not very happy to try and um, navigate a Crassius matchup th three times in a row after I lose this one. So we transform both, <laughs> which is just 11 Feria worth of value to do nothing. Oh dear. This is a disaster. <laughs> Okay, I don't want to look at this matchup anymore. <laughs> this was embarrassing. So we obviously lose this. I mean, I invested 11 Feria to kill off Carassius. Uh, I, for one thing, invested the Feria. So um, for any like newer players, the definite play here was just double neutral left side to try and race the Carassius. Just ignore him, because if you ignore the Carassius, he can't do anything. He value trades my farm boy, but... Then he's never going to kill off the Crassius, and pretty much I just have to outrace three damage to face. Uh, which is reasonably easy to do. Uh, this was such a winnable matchup. Damn. I think it was a mistake on Mardis's part also to invest the Crassius. Um, 
I mean, I played into it like a big dummy. But... <laughs> wow, we really actually grind for quite a long time in this match, huh? But it doesn't really matter. It's a pretty unwinnable matchup at this point. I can hope for, like, Garrett in top deck, but in this position he gets a lot of crests. Yes. Not even that many. He doesn't even need to play them, because... I just threw away 11 Feria for no reason. So yeah, we just, uh, we will lose this one. So, we're what, 1 to 3? Oh sorry, 1 to 2? Okay, so Twin Souls gotta win it all. Last matchup. Uh, solid starting hand though. Oh yeah, I remember this match. Yeah, this one gets exciting. <clears throat> yeah, this was Lizard's List, but I, I took out the uh, Triton Divers for the Sun Silk Fairies. I thought they just did a little bit more. Triton Divers hard to use. <laughs> That was very expensive. Mm, we have a lot of creatures. And we get the flip. Very cool. <clears throat> Double neutral, what? Yeah, we can just build up lands. Um, we need to really get like a lot of face hits in. Uh, right, so I'm debating the desert here just to get this emissary in an aggressive spot. Because I do have that celestial tower, we can make some aggressive plays potentially once that Crassia steps up and collects. You did update the list on the hub? Oh, did you? Did you put in uh, Sunsilk Fairy? Drops another shield made, so less good to just throw this 5-3 in. I guess I could still do it. If I value trade with the 4-2, I could actually value trade with the 5-3 as well. Uh, he gets to kill the Sun Silk, but then the 5-3 survives. I think that's worth it. Do I go for it? I think I don't, though. Diver was a bit too cute in the end. Yeah, Sun Silk. Yeah, that's fair. It was. I thought the idea also with the Diver was to, because you had a lot of desert creatures, so it allowed you to play more stuff on the board, but like with the Mantas, which can just be played on any land type, yeah. It, and then you also oftentimes just get choked by the Aquatic, because you want to put deserts on the well sometimes. Or your opponent builds lines on the wells or something. Diver is almost a card. It's so cool. It's almost a card. I wonder if, like, it would be okay as a two cost, but two likes? Would that be too overpowered? Maybe. Then it's just a better battle toad. Okay, so I didn't end up going for that aggressive play. I think I could have gone for it because it would have allowed me to potentially get a face poke with the 5-3. And I'm really looking for as many face pokes as possible with these 5 power. <clears throat> Iona's kind of cool in this matchup. Uh, I mean, I guess it's it can be blasted by Cannoneer, but that's pretty expensive for them. But you can use it as a body blocker to zone out the Crassius. <clears throat> uh, 
since I didn't go for the aggro play last turn though, we're gonna have to try and set something up, so I just kind of maneuver my flyers around. <clears throat> Move away from the wells, and we're hoping for a, a big turn, where we can maybe get two face hit slaps somewhere. Uh, I think I just probably keep the 5-3. Like, the Celestial Tower in hand is kind of nice. I could step the guy up, I guess. I don't think there's a disadvantage to stepping him up. After Cheese pointed out that the list was casually running 14 events, I had to resign. Yeah, he pointed that out to me and I was- and I looked at it and I'm like, oh, huh, yeah. <laughs> Sunsilk just makes sense here, doesn't it? So, uh, creation invested. Uh, so we... There's options here. I could take a face poke with the 5-2. That would give him the Crassius trade, or I just wait a little bit longer. Try to get more face hits in one turn. Uh, I also get to play Fagoro here, which is cool. Fagoro Crystal Dragon is an option. <clears throat> I don't think I'm really looking for any draws in this particular matchup. Um, like maybe Soul Drain or something, but realistically, Crystal Dragon's looking really good. Because what I'm really looking for is the charge. Anything with 5 power and charge 3, that's going to be a good card in this matchup. I do end up taking it. Because, yeah, I need to get as many face pokes in on a single turn as possible. If I only do it on one turn, then it's likely he gets to trade off Karasius into a bunch of stuff. So we're just setting up a big board. Uh, the 6-6 six -six actually works pretty nice with the 4-2 on board too. If the two of them want to hit face, then it actually equates to 10 damage. Um, whereas the 4-2 alone isn't a great, great face hitter, it's not going to have that even um, four-turn lethal setup that the Flyers have. Thirteen fairy, a lot of potential to swarm. He actually spirit thefts. But we have a Spirit Theft in hand, we can Theft back. And this is looking like the turn we go in. Though there's a lot of Swarm on board here. So this was a really tricky turn. But this definitely was the window. So we'll let me play it out and then we'll maybe go back and review this because this was a very crucial line. Um, the 4-2 killing itself off is kind of nice because we get to actually zip in the 6-6 six -six now and take the face it. And then my next play is the Celestial Tower. Uh, we value trade. And we double neutral like this. So this allows me to hop my 3-2 and get the aggressive Iona because it's now a neutral card. Since we spirit thefted it. And then we get to just follow up with Demon Wing. He's got to go a bit passive, but that's okay. So that was the line. Um, I'm not sh like, that could have been better. Was that okay? I guess that was okay. Actually, the, the questionable line was uh, coming up on this next turn, now that I think about it. Unfortunately, the 5-1 gets traded with the two 1-1s. So 
so that's not great. That double land was working overtime? Yeah, that double land was super cool. I think that land was okay. I mean, the, uh, the line was okay. Um... So the only thing that happened, we lost our 4-2 in that exchange. But if we went for like a value trade on the 1-1, one, one, then we wouldn't have got to hit face. Mm. Yeah. The line was excellent. Okay, Lizard approves. I'll take it and run with it. I can't really see a better line. Uh, cause the face hit's really important. I think. Illusionist comes down, which is actually kinda nice, cause he just kinda sacrifices the entire shield maids there. So we do have a chance here. There's only two Crassius on board. Okay, it's a lot of stuff. So let's just play through the line that I take. Uh, hop over and value trade the 1-3. Th we find a soul drain though with the top deck, so now this actually lets me soul drain that one Crassius first and then zip this 5-3 for a uh, face hit. So that's what we go for. Value trade, we get to hit for five again. And then I could kill the Carassius. To be fair, the spot that I'm standing on is not terrible. Oh right, I think I kill the Carassius here and then I actually use the second Celestial Tower to kill off the 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, so we do this. <clears throat> um, and then my idea is that we're keeping the 5 2 alive. So we can actually um, hit face. I say that was a mistake. I don't think the structure needed to be body blocking here. Because um, that, that could have been a potential desert. I was thinking of body blocking with the structure to begin with. Actually, I could have body blocked with the structure. And then just sent up the 5-2. I didn't probably need to take this trade, unless the threshold's important. <clears throat> but he just takes the 5-3, so he's got a taunt structure there. And I forgot that I was losing flying, actually. So this guy is now a 3-2, not a 5-2. Not great. Uh, right, the threshold. Yeah, right, there was some threshold. So he finds the cannoneer, clears that, and now I'm stuck. Now we got a 3 1 here, being taunted. Uh, that taunt structure is just gonna heal as well, um, which is pretty sad. But let's go back a little bit, because I think there was a bit of a misplay here. Uh, it was very subtle, though. So on this turn... This ended up being pretty crucial, using the Demon Wing to trade the 2-2 two -two instead of the 3-2. Yeah, so on this turn... Um... Yeah, I used the 3-2 to kill this, and the 5-2 to kill this. So, instead, I could have used the 3-2 to kill the 2-2. Two -two. And then, after all- right, so after all was said and done, we top deck the Soul Drain, so we're doing this play. We soul Drain this, we zip up this guy, hit face, but then with the second Celestial Tower, we were able to zip up the 5-2 to value trades, and then now we've got a 5-2, sitting in range of this Leia, and then so on this play, 
or on this turn, when the structure was on board, um, we would have had a 5-2 sitting here instead of the 3-1, so we would have actually been able to value trades, or uh, just take out the structure. Um, the other consideration was actually just killing Lyra on this turn, and going for more control lines. Um, <clears throat> I remember we were debating that in the Twitch chat for a while. So there's a line where you could just board control here, take out the Lyra to deny collections, get rid of the structure immediately. Um, but both plays are very debatable. It's, it's hard to tell. Also, thinking about the thresholds here, uh, his follow-up play on that turn was... Um, Ulani into Cannoneer and clear this. And he spent exactly all of his Faria to do this. So, if we had cleared the Laia, he wouldn't have had Ulani into Cannoneer. That wouldn't have been an option. So, there's definitely a debate to be had about clearing the Laia there. Um, just to prevent this play from happening, and we might have had an actual setup on board. Killing Laya would have denied Ulani into clear, yeah. Yeah, so that was a really crucial turn. There was so much to think about there, though. It was a really tricky one. And on this turn, we top deck Nightmare and Istanu. So, I mean... It's so sad, too, that this wasn't just a 5-1, because it would have got a lot further. Like, if I would have been able to just insta-kill this structure, develop the Astanu, I mean, the Astanu's not in trade range, unfortunately. No matter where I can put him, my deserts are a bit awkward here. Um, I could have actually nightmared the 2-2. Two -two. I could have nightmared the 2 2. We've seen. I can't remember how many cannoneers we've seen. I know there's been at least two. Um, if I was counting. Would have been nice to count. Because it would have been a very cool play for Demon Wing to trade this and then just nightmare the 2 2. But then I guess Crassius Swarm can come down again. Uh, but then we have the option to Soul Drain a Crassius and then. Uh, we got a Demon Wing. Threatening face. Very cool. So I do just end up going for a Stanu. This was the third copy. I think he played a creation, didn't he? At some point? Can't remember. We do find a twin soul, so maybe we can find an in somewhere. We need to line this Estanu up in a place where you can hit face. But this is so sad, because the structure survived. He's healing him past the threshold. And now I'm just so sad, because I really needed this to be one shot away from lethal. And that's just not going to happen. Um, I use up the structure charge here so that I can delete it next turn if I want to, because he has the option to just ignore the structure if he wants, because um, it's body blocking my own guy. Uh, and it's, it's dead anyway, so maybe we just delete a charge on it. Oh, third copy of the Rakoan God at the third cannon here. Yeah, so we could have gone for a Nightmare play there on the 2-2 then, if if that was a Demon Wing. And that very well could have made all the difference and won us this game. Uh, I suppose I've spoiled the ending now. <laughs> we don't win this game. <laughs> but I think that's pretty obvious. Um, with the Healy structure... Like, it's just putting us way too far out of range. And then he finds a second copy of Crassius too, so... Um, no way we can possibly break through this. Even if he horribly misplays, that Healy structure is just gonna put him out of range, unfortunately. Which is crazy how relevant that structure was. Like, I wasn't even considering that when I did my Fogoro trades. So I was like, ah, oh, it doesn't matter. 
but yeah, um, pretty tough to win this now. Mardis found his win condition. Can he actually heals? I actually play this out like quite a while. He heals like up to 12 HP. <laughs> All with the structure and maybe like a spirit theft or two. Oh yeah, and then I went for a desperate attempt here at um, some treasures I actually got. Yeah, this was kind of a fun play. <laughs> so I found a third treasure, this was my last and final hope, but on 11 HP here, kind of tough. So we go for Key of Giants because that's the only random generation effect. I don't really know what really what saves me here. When it's on 11. Well, I, I'm on 20 here, so I could maybe find... I don't know. It's kind of tough. Don't find anything there, so we go for the second random generation effect in the Tiki. And don't find anything the third time around. So, yeah. We get the Blazing Salamander just for funsies. We get to kill a bunch of Crassius as we go. And then that's it! And Mardis takes the crown for rune and open number one, and we take second place instead. But well played to Mardis. Um, um, yeah, so there were some misplays that were made there. I think that Crassius matchup was definitely winnable. Um, even with the... Uh, blue sevens list. I just played that horribly. I think that one was already very winnable because of the Carassius placement. But then the the second one was potentially winnable if I had just swapped the Fogora with the Demon Wing. Crazy how just one single misplay like that can cost you the entire game. Um, but uh, ultimately. My lineup as a whole had two really slow lists into it, so it was kind of going to be a challenging time against Crassius from the get-go, I guess. Um, I could have designed the lineup a little bit better, but I mean, we'll take second place. That's not bad. That's not bad. Oh, I forgot PC. You're still here. Well, we're going to do a poem to end it off, but um, if you're watching on YouTube, thanks for watching. This is the end. We don't have Rune and Open number 2 scheduled yet, but stay tuned for that. Abraham's kind of busy with their new game. We got that playtest weekend happening this week. Well, thanks for the follow, Just a Horse. And yes, see you guys later.